Aaron Greenberg from Xbox says that the price of games don't matter, but he has a really good reason as to why he said this. So Aaron Greenberg, who is the Xbox games marketing GM, got asked about the prices of games rising because as we know with publishers like Sony and Activision and Take-Two, a lot of their games now are $10 more. So if you live in the United States, games generally sell $60. And I mean, that's been the standard for many, many years. And now a lot of these games are going up to the standard of $70. Now on Aaron Greenberg's appearance of the Real Deal podcast, he was asked about the price of games and he had a pretty interesting answer to go along with that question. So here's what he had to say. Gaming pricing is a super complex thing to answer because in the old days, every game launched at one price and that was it. But we launched Ori and the Will of the Wisps at $30 and Gears Tactics is a new title launching this holiday and it's launching at $60. They have to K2 launched at $40. So there's not a simple answer to that except to say that Tactics were launching at $60. Now to me, what he's saying in this paragraph is that Xbox first party games going forward are gonna be $60. Now, yes, I know Gears Tactics is an older game that came out on the PC previously, but it is first time launching on the console and coming to the Series X. So technically it is a next generation game for the Series X and it's $60. So I think going forward, all Xbox first party games are going to be launching at $60. He then goes on to say, I think what you've seen across the industry with a couple of notable exceptions is that most people, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is $60, Cyberpunk 2077, The Dirt 5, all $60. There are some exceptions of titles where we've seen particularly for sports games where they're coming out in advance of the next generation and they don't have smart delivery. They're including the Gen 9 versions and charging you more. Now, I know majority of the EA sports games for the Xbox Series X have that smart delivery. So if you do buy the Xbox One version, you're going to get that free upgrade to the Xbox Series X version. But I believe it's NBA 2K21 that doesn't have that free upgrade. You're going to have to pay that 10 extra dollars. He continues and says it's a different approach and they have a right to do whatever they want to do with their price. But for us, we've really taken a fan-centric approach, first with smart delivery, and most importantly, you get all of your games at the launch with Game Pass. So does the price of a game even matter if it's included in your Game Pass subscription? Now, this is where I think he makes a really good point. Do the prices of games actually matter if you're on Game Pass? Because you're going to have a massive catalog of games right away, and every single first-party game whether it launches at 100, whether it launches at 10, whether it launches at $50, it doesn't matter because it's coming day one into Game Pass. So you don't even have to pay for it. You're going to get it. And then with smart delivery, if you're somebody who wants to buy something on Xbox One and you don't have an Xbox Series X pre-ordered or you're not able to get more launch window, you're going to get that free upgrade into the next generation as well. So the next generation pricing of games, again, doesn't matter. But here's the thing. The biggest advantage of Game Pass in the subscription service is that even if there's a third party game that's not on that service and it launches for $10 more like $70 than we were used to with the $60 with game pass you have such a large catalog of games and unless you just have zero patience at all you can wait to pick up that game you can wait a month or two three as we've seen with the last generation where prices drop they get even like a quick $20 price slash all the time and you're not going to be feeding to play a game because you have a massive catalog from Game Pass. And I think that does go a long way for a lot of people. And then you look at the PlayStation model where every game is going to be $70. But again, you could also just wait for the price slashes on those games, but you won't have that subscription backlog to play while you're waiting for the price slashes. And I think that's going to have a huge difference for a lot of people. With Game Pass, you're going to see a big shift in the industry because the singular sales numbers for a singular game is not going to mean nearly as much as the number of subscribers that you have on Game Pass on your subscription service. It's kind of competing well with cloud gaming because they're going to be looking at their number of subscribers as well to their service. And that's going to be the biggest thing going forward. And as we've seen, Xbox Game Pass continues to grow with over like 15 million users now. And it's not just because they give you lots of games and a bunch of random throw in shovelware games into Game Pass. It's because you're getting so much value when you actually sign up for Game Pass. You're getting great games and then you're only paying, what, $15 a month, $10 a month, whatever that is. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Do you think the prices of games don't matter now because of subscription services like Game Pass? Or do you think that $10 increase is going to have a massive impact? And do you think people on PlayStation are gonna to start to see this and then start realizing the advantage of Game Pass? Thank you guys all for watching. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and that thumbs down if you didn't. I'm gonna be covering everything next gen and I'll begin the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 on day one. 
so I am very excited to make more videos on those when I have them in my hands. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.